All right, we are traveling the Oregon Trail today. It is the way that people got out to the Oregon country before we have roads. Um, the Oregon country was not really a part of the United States um, until 1846. The Oregon Treaty of 1846 established a border between Canada and the United States and gave us control of the Oregon country. But even before that, Americans were still going out to Oregon using the Oregon Trail. I asked you to go to this website and follow the headings and answer these questions. And now we're gonna go over those. If you missed class today, you should maybe do a split screen and check your answers as we go. And of course, always make sure that you especially have what's highlighted because eventually that will be on a quiz or test. All right, the introduction, number one, why was the Oregon Trail important? I pretty much just answered that. It was the only way to get across the mountains to the far west. Number two, what ratio of Oregon Trail travelers died along the way? One out of 10. So that's a lot uh, for every nine people you know, plus you, one of you is not going to make it. And that's pretty grim. And then I was just testing your math skills to see if you could remember how to do a percent. That is 10%. So 10% of the travelers are not going to make it. And number three kind of outlines the various things that may have taken their lives. Um, it is 2,000 miles, so that's a pretty far trek to be doing on foot. Most people are walking the whole time. Um, the wagon is packed so full of supplies, there's really no room for people to ride in the wagon, unless it's toward the end of the trip and your supplies are low and you've made space inside the wagon. Basically, there's space up there for one person to be driving the wagon. There might be space for one more next to that person. Um, maybe you can hop on the back every once in a while, but for the most part, you are walking. Some people end up barefoot because they literally walk themselves out of their shoes. The shoes don't last the whole 2,000 miles and ended up barefoot, which I imagine would be extremely uncomfortable. Accidental gunshots were a problem. They did bring guns for hunting and for protecting themselves, and sometimes that would unfortunately occur. There's a, an illness called cholera that is spread through um, unsanitary conditions, and, like dirty water, infected water. And they didn't know at the time how it spread. And so there's really no way for them to control it. And once you get it, it's going to kill you rather quickly. I mean, you can survive cholera, but the odds of surviving cholera when you're traveling the Oregon Trail are pretty slim. And it was a terrible death that would happen pretty rapidly because you become dehydrated and your organs start to shut down. So that was definitely a problem, especially the fact that they didn't know how you got it. What ended use of the Oregon Trail? This is the first one that is highlighted, so make sure you highlight this. And the answer is the Transcontinental Railroad, which was finished in 1869. That is going to provide us a faster, safer, more efficient way to travel out west. Transcontinental, because trans means across. So now we have a railroad across the continent as of 1869. So they're gonna be using this for a while, decades. As always, you can press pause whenever you need to get caught up and then just press play again when you're ready. I'm gonna move on to jumping off. What town was the most popular jumping off point? It's a town called Independence, Missouri. That's usually where you would go, gather all your gear. There were stores and merchants there to supply you with all the things that you needed and you would join up with another group that was going because traveling in numbers is always safer and increases your chances of survival. Number six, why did travelers wait until mid spring to start their journeys? It is all about timing. You don't wanna to go too early because if you go too early, there won't be enough grass for your oxen to graze along the way. You don't want to go too late because then that will put you in the Rocky Mountains at winter time and that could be deadly. So you really do need to time it just right. You wanna leave 
like late March, early April, I would say, so that there is some grass for your livestock to eat, but hopefully it will get you there before winter sets in. That is the goal. Number seven, a family of four needed at least a thousand pounds of food to last through the journey. So this is what I mean when I say those wagons are absolutely packed to the brim. And there's really no room for people, especially at the beginning of the trip. You're using oxen to pull the wagons, by the way, in case you're wondering, not horses, but oxen. They're strong. Number eight, list the dangers. Uh, we talked about some challenges up above, but these are the everyday dangers that could kill you. River crossings, there were people who drowned in river crossings, um, especially animals. And if your animals die, that's not good for you either. If your oxen can't pull the wagon, then you don't have your supplies and then you could die. So keeping the animals alive is just as important as keeping you alive. Accidents, there are stories. In fact, in this part of the website, there was a heartbreaking story about a small child that fell off the wagon and got run over by another one. So there were accidents, people falling off the wagon, getting run over by wagons, um, you know, whatever it may be. Weather is always an issue in that part of the country. It's a really dangerous part of the country. The weather is really volatile and the storms are very severe and violent. I wouldn't want to be out there in the open, which is exactly how these people traveled. And then of course, cholera is always an everyday danger. You never know when it's going to hit because they didn't really know how they got it. So those are definitely everyday dangers that they had to face. And those are on your quiz. If you were on a journey, which danger would worry you the most? There's no wrong answer to that. I just wanted you to kind of put yourself in their position and think about that. Camping. Why did travelers circle their wagons at camp? There's a myth that they did it to keep Indians from attacking them at night, but that is a myth. First of all, Indians hardly ever attacked these people. They usually only attacked if they were attacked first. So that's not an issue. Indian attacks were not a problem. Um, in fact, that's a question that we're gonna answer later anyway. Um, it was to keep livestock from wandering off because again the livestock are extremely important to you If they die you could die So they would circle the wagons and keep the animals inside that circle so that they wouldn't wander off while you're sleeping Number 11. What did they use for fuel when trees became scarce? Buffalo dung or buffalo chips, which if you don't know what that is, it's buffalo poop it dries up in the hot Sun on the prairie and it becomes hard, almost like a Frisbee. In fact, the kids would play with them like Frisbees. I know that's crazy, but they didn't have PlayStation. So the kids would actually go out in the evenings when they would camp, everybody had a job to do, and it was usually the kid's job to go out and collect firewood. And when trees became scarce because people were cutting them down after years and years of um, using the trail, they would actually start to use buffalo dung if there were no trees available and it burns nice and slow and even and supposedly does not smell bad. I don't know if I believe that, but they say it doesn't. Number 12, list common foods that they ate. Almost on a daily basis, they're eating bread and bacon. It's not the delicious home-baked bread that we eat that's soft and gooey and, and you know, pliable. It's really hard bread, very dry, almost like crackers. And the bacon is also not really the bacon that you're thinking of. It's gonna be almost more like a beef jerky type of a thing. It has to be stuff that can be preserved. They can make the bread using the flour that they bring with them. And the bacon is basically already made um, and it's salted and cured and preserved that way. So it's a very boring diet, that's for sure. They would have hunted and tried to kill animals and cook them up and eat them each night, but that's not always going to be available. And they could gather berries and things like that wherever they can find them, but, but again, that's not always available. The bread and bacon are always available because they bring that with them. Number 13, on average, how many miles did they travel each day? Not much, only 15 on average. And that's really not many at all. Uh, to give you an idea of mileage, I mean, it's like 35 or 40 miles from here to Pittsburgh. So you're really only talking not even halfway to Pittsburgh. 
and that's it. So very, very slow journey, and it would take about six months. That's why you wanna leave in March or April, because if you stay on track, if you're on schedule, you will reach your destination in September or October, and that's perfect, because you're getting there before winter sets in. It would have been hard. You can imagine how hard this would be. I'm actually surprised anybody did it, because it sounds pretty terrible. Were Native American attacks common along the trail? No, they were not. That is a myth. And 16, what negative effects did the travelers leave along the way? Well, their livestock overgrazed the land and that's not good for the future. It's not good for the environment. It's not good for farming in the future. If all the grass is overeaten, then it doesn't take root and it does not regenerate. And if grass doesn't regenerate, then um, there's nothing there to hold the soil in place and in times of drought especially the soil dries out and it becomes almost like sand and then when you have these wind storms which they do get a lot in the Great Plains by the way because it's so flat the wind picks up that dust and it creates dust storms so overgrazing the land is a major problem that will have consequences for generations they cut down the trees um, almost completely, and that's why they ended up having to use buffalo dung as fuel for fire. So that's not good for the environment either. And they really do end up depleting the buffalo. They almost go extinct. There were, I mean, I've read numbers up in the millions of buffalo roaming the Great Plains for many, many generations that the Native Americans depend upon for survival in that area. But these settlers and hunters that end up coming later are almost going to kill them to extinction. And that really changes the settlement patterns of the Great Plains Indians and it totally changes their way of life just because of that one animal being depleted. So that is another negative effect. So the effects on the environment are pretty bad. Um, it will bounce back. We get it to bounce back, but um, for a while it was pretty bad and that's it so that's the Oregon Trail it's a really famous story in American history pioneers traveling risking their lives for a better life which they thought was waiting for them out west and again the highlighted stuff is on your quiz so uh, 16 14 12 11 10 make sure you're highlighting these 8 5 four and that's it all right make sure that you follow the instructions on the Schoology page for today because there is more on there regarding your stock market report we are starting the third quarter today so make sure that you go to the purple stock market folder download the q3 report quarter three add your last name to the file and save it to the OneDrive like we've been doing every quarter and then you'll be able to fill in your company names, your company symbols, your purchase prices. That's all left over from your other charts. You should be able to carry that over. And then look up the 129 value and fill that in for today.